All right, and we're back, and we ran into a little glitch. And let's see, last time I had you on the phone, I uh, didn't get the audio quite right, so you sounded a little quiet, I think, on that video, but it's good enough, I think. So let's come over here to the computer and see what okay. happened. <clears throat> the file name would be too long for the destination folder. You can shorten the file name and try again. I've had this happen before, and uh -huh. I forgot about this uh, this little thing. And it, I checked on it at a, at a couple points. It looked like it went a lot faster than we were expecting. Did you notice that? Yeah, I did. Uh, however. Uh... As it was running, I decided to go outside and, and do some little weed killing. But uh, then okay. I came in and saw this, and I thought, oh, maybe I better, because I didn't know whether you, you had gone out for lunch or whether you went to the other room. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. I did notice this before you uh, texted me with it. Okay. So basically, we're going to have to start the procedure over again for the copy uh -oh. operation. So okay. but I want to explain what, what's happened here mm -hmm. uh, for the benefit of those who are watching the video um, for the purposes of education. Sure. As we're copying this old folder called old yeah. from your old computer, mm -hmm. and it was inside a folder called Doug Betts Tools, which is inside a folder called Drivers mm -hmm. on that F drive. And we were copying it to this folder over here, which is inside a folder called Fabs Auto Backup Pro for User Profiles. Mm -hmm. And that was inside of a folder called Doug Betts Tools. That was inside of a folder called SW Setup. So look at the length of that path mm -hmm. and compare that to the length of this path. This is much shorter. Well, it sure is. So what happens is the files that are inside this folder, when they cop get copied over to the new computer, they, um, they wind up being too long for the destination folder. That's what this is saying here. So it's actually telling us it found a particular file folder called rewards activation. Now that folder could be several folder levels deep. So it that stopped the operation. Now we could skip this one file if we recognize it as not being important. But in the past, I have found that if we skip it, then there's it's going to find another one, and then another one, and then another one. Oh. So I typically wind up concluding that it's more efficient to just go ahead and abort the whole operation and and start it again in a method that won't encounter this problem. See? So out of curiosity, I'm gonna go ahead and hit skip a couple times. And of course we could use the check mark to, to skip all of them, but then we have no idea how many there were. Yeah. So this keeps going over and over again for that same uh, folder name. And that's probably because there are files within that folder and they're all too long. I think that's a different folder name there. But mm -hmm. at any rate, so what I'll do is just cancel this. And then I'm going to, well, let's do a little more out of curiosity. I'll right click on that and choose properties and right click on this one and choose properties and just compare how close we were to being done now, on your old hard drive, it's taken a lot longer for it to figure out how much that is because that is a slower drive. Right. <clears throat> and we expect it to be higher than this number. So it's it just got halfway through. Okay. Uh, and it might be going quite a bit longer. In fact, I think we remember seeing 44 gigabytes. Um total that fabs auto backup could have been uh no there it is. oh wow that's pretty darn close 4449 that's 4499 on the new computer too yeah yeah that's in fact really... that's almost identical almost 
except quite. except for the term location. The term location. Well, yeah, because yeah, it's it was in this longer oh, path okay. over here. But uh, twenty-two thousand one twenty-seven files compared to twenty-two thousand one ninety-three files. So it was a uh, hundred and thirty-four files difference. Yeah. So if we had kept clicking that skip button, it would have been one hundred and thirty-four times to get wow. through all of that. So <laughs> that that's enough to just abort this and do it over again. I it was it wasn't that time consuming. So I'll delete this from the new computer. Okay, so that's gone. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up a few levels. Right now we're in the Fabs Auto backup. So if I click the up arrow, then that takes us to Doug Betts Tools, up arrow, up arrow, and then here's the C drive. So if we copy this folder called old straight over to the root level of the C drive, mm -hmm. there's no way that the path names are going to be too long. So I'll just drag this over, copy to C drive. Now it's evaluating, and when we started this last time, I think it showed us a time that was more than an hour, mm -hmm. and, but it decreased rather quickly. Now, you said you had uh, something else that you made a note of that you thought you wanted to deal with. Is this a good time to tell me about that? Well, I, I took some notes. Um, most often when I talk to somebody, they say, well, did you do do a backup? That was one of the first things that they asked. And I don't fully understand backups. So uh, I put, first thing I wrote down was understanding backups. And then I thought, okay, there, uh, there's been a, a program out there that uh, – long 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 time ago i i used it was called firefox and mozilla because it was supposed to be uh, a little safer and i would like to learn about firefox mozilla and in some time and then uh, some of the browsers uh, i happened to be listening to uh, a, a, a very prominent uh, talk show host the other day that was talking about uh, security on the iPhones and what have you. And, and uh, he was talking about the pitfalls of, of uh, clicking on unsubscribe that oftentimes if the uh, term that's on some of these things, to, if you click on unsubscribe, that's just the open door for everything else to come in as opposed to really truly unsubscribing to something that you didn't want to see anymore. So that was something that I was curious about. Also, when you're doing some work on your computer and, and, and uh, you're interrupted by um, pop-ups, and I thought maybe a session sometime would be good to how to avoid pop-ups and what we might be doing as an operator of my own computer doing incorrectly that causes me to experience a greater number of pop-ups. So that was something that I thought would be nice. Um, also, computer security, uh, who, whose program do you buy? Do you buy uh, PCmatic? Do you buy malware bytes? Do you mount um, adware? Or, a, a G V something of that sort. So computer security is important to me because when I do my banking, I don't want people looking at it. Sure. So uh, computer security, if you're going to purchase it, which one is good, which one has been, uh, and, and oftentimes when you go and look at pros and cons about a particular thing, you, I'm not quite sure that I'm getting an unbiased pros and cons. 
So that would be something else. Uh, I don't know whether I mentioned, but the safest browsers is something else. If you're going to use a browser, which one is considered industry-wise to be the safest and how and, and which one should to give you flexibility and when you go to your computer and, and look up things? So those are one, two, three, four, five, plus six things that I've started listing that I have doubts of, uh, about, and uh, maybe it would be something that I could learn more about so I don't become vulnerable to all kinds of problems. Those are, those are great topics. I'd love to do some sessions on those topics. I'd be happy to, boy. I'll tell you, some Good. of these things of just are so annoying and you're right in the middle of something and all of a sudden you get this and and you can't go anyplace else and you think okay well i'll just close it out and uh, and start over so <laughs> i'm open to that kiddo so look there we go time out <laughs> Uh, um, so you might have noticed the last couple of seconds there, my voice wasn't heard. Well, you'll see that I cleared my throat there and I hit the mute button. And then when I hit the unmute button, I probably double tapped it. I don't know what, but my voice is gone, is absent through the rest of the video. So I was contemplating, should I just edit it and cut it short or not post this video at, at all. Um, so what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to probably do some voiceovers as the rest of the video goes through. If you're the type of person that's highly critical of production values, you might want to stop watching this video right here. Or maybe drag the playhead forward or increase the speed. There's that gear icon in the bottom right corner. Well, depend upon what kind of a device you're watching on. There's some place to increase the speed up to double speed. As I look through the rest of this video, yeah, there are some things in here that are reasonably worthwhile publishing. So, sorry about that. So what I did to fix it is I have changed the mute button on my stream deck so that it's a uh, bright red when it's on mute to try to make it more noticeable so here we go going back to the video t t today is february 14th that video was recorded on february 10th so i'm four days older and wiser <laughs> as i'm preparing this video for publishing so here we return to your program in progress. At about 17% so far. That's not very. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. So at this point, I'm just yeah, explaining. So, that. So explaining so it Chuck might take that long, and it may some of the uh, compression so, that happens knows? while copying these files. <laughs> yeah, This is more a conversation about how it goes mm -hmm. faster at some times and slower at other times. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I saw one gigabyte remaining and then so many megabytes left. Wow. There, it's up to three Boy, hours and 45 you know, it's, minutes it's, uh, estimated. As a, as a person that really doesn't truly understand the computer, I'm wondering what I put in my old computer that is so complex or, or, or so big, who knows, um, that maybe I was interested in a, in a, a widget from uh, Timbuktu 
and that opened uh, a file 14 miles long. Is that is that kind of what happens? Maybe if someone knows how to read lips, I could. I have no oh, idea yes. what I'm saying there. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm so. I was so scared that I was going to lose them, and uh, those, those uh, that, if you look at the screen of, screen of my old computer, that little arrow with the vertical line and the E, and in 2020, those those drawings are very important to me. Um, and I'm and I'm glad that they're still on this old computer because I don't have any. Those those drawings cost quite a bit of money, and to re purchase those uh, <laughs> it wouldn't be helpful. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, we made up some wonderful time there from three hours and 10 minutes to four minutes and 30 seconds. It looks like it's just about reversed. Hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm explaining here that the, the tall, dark green area is indicating a higher speed uh, portion of files. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. I'm noticing there the HP three zip. Okay. So it's in Hewlett Packard something or other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. I wonder if that's that. Uh, that could be like the E files. Who knows? I mean, are the e-drawings? Uh, yeah, this uh, the, the new one is an HP. Uh, all all the rest uh, all the rest of them were generic. Th this. Um, the one that we installed last April and the one I currently have now are that's the first time I've ever had an HP computer. You know, uh, another thing that just popped into my, my feeble mind was uh, you're talking about uh, in here, you're, you pointed out earlier on the screen that the little zipper and that that indicated that it was a zip file. Well, I have no idea what a zip file is. So, so there's an item that I'd like to learn a little bit more about at some future date. What is a zip file and, and, and how do you use it? So um, that might be something we can talk about in the future. I don't know, I, I don't know whether you run across too many people that are as computer illiterate as me. <laughs> I, they, I, I'm fascinated by it, but I oftentimes don't understand it. And I'm afraid to do things because I'm afraid I'll hurt the computer or destroy some of my files. That, that's the scary part. So. <laughs>
Mexico. Well, it, 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 it's, a, it's a marvelous tool and it's, it's fun to learn. And uh, sometimes I wonder if I'm learning incorrectly and, and you can't ask the general public because oftentimes the general public don't know as much as you do. Yeah, so that's the, mm-hmm. Oh yes, yeah. I'm I'm a, a, a big um, advocate of of trikes uh, of all all uh, all styles, either two wheels in front and one in the back, or one wheel in front and two in the back. And I I enjoy the when I first built my first trike, I I conversed with a, a gentleman in England and uh, about tilting how you can make a three wheel vehicle lean like a conventional motorcycle, which makes it far more safer in the mountains and what have you. So I'm, I'm a big advocate of trikes and, and I've got a tremendous amount of information um, stored in this old computer and that might be what you're seeing. We got onto the subject of trikes because I noticed some file names mm -hmm. in his e drawings I knew had to do with the trikes. Yeah, that he I, builds. and I don't know how that occurred. Um, I would think that I would like to have named everything that I uh, kept, but not knowing how to do that, maybe that's the reason you see a lot of numbers as opposed to titles. Could that be, is that what it is? Okay. Okay. Well, there is one trike that I took a picture of and stored in the computer. I thought that I've been trying to find for months. So maybe after this is, is back up and running, I can find him again. It was one of the most, you know, when I, when I got rid of, or didn't get rid of, when I gave up my Titan aircraft dealership and kind of quasi closed my RCR light aircraft. However, I still build nose sports for Titans and I have, but I haven't built one in for a while because I've pretty well saturated the market. The airplanes, I love, which I love so much and I miss flying so badly. I substituted trikes for it, and and now I've built three of them, and and I'm having a lot of fun doing that. It certainly keeps me busy, but uh, I certainly miss flying tremendously. Yes, we have. Um, I, I in fact, I just found a new fellow that I accidentally knew long, long time ago, and he re-emerged in, in West Sacramento, and uh, he goes by the name, in other words, if you do a search with for the word J-A-Y-O-C-U-L-A-R, you'll find him, and he's kind of a hayseed fella that uh, uses crude methods of building, but ends up being one of the strongest trikes on the market. And I've just discovered him and gone through 36 different YouTube programs where he had posted quite some time ago. And I've learned a lot by it, but there are a great many variations of trikes using anywhere from standard Volkswagen engines to V8 engines in the front 
V8 engines and V6 engines in the back. I've also been in communications with a with a manufacturer in Texas in Cool City called Cool City Trikes, uh, which the state of California, state of Texas have banned. But uh, I wanted to get in, enter into a relationship with them a long time ago, but that didn't. They decided to go completely into aircraft controls for helicopters, so that left that left me out. It looks like we're getting close, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, I think we've been at it for about 35 minutes, something like that. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm, that's how much I, I lost track of time bloviating. We had actually been 25 minutes into the video when that finished. Yeah, I do. Um, here, I'll show it to you. It's a Logitech. It's not a real powerful one. It's only 750 um, pixels, but it was a start. And I, I plugged it into the new computer just the other day before yesterday before um, I talked to you. No, wait a minute. I guess I talked to you today for the first time. Anyway, I put it in yesterday and uh, don't know what it, what to do with it, but I, I thought maybe I would uh, plug it in and see because our our daughter from uh, my wife's daughter in, Sacra in uh, Tacoma, Washington, wanted to know if I had the, the ability to do computer video. And I said, no, because my, my monitor doesn't have a video uh, camera built in. So that's why I got one yesterday. I had just asked Chuck about his webcam. We're going to switch him over to the webcam here in a minute. Well, no, I did not get a microphone. Uh, I, I asked, does, does this little camera have a microphone in it? I guess it does. Okay. Okay. You might notice when we make the change that it's a more comfortable viewing okay. angle to not be looking up at a person because he's on his phone right now in this Zoom session. If you can get a camera at eye level, it's oh. much more comfortable. Yeah. So I'm actually remotely setting up his webcam and joining him to the Zoom session. So he'll be in the Zoom session on both his webcam and his cell phone in a minute here. Okay. Okay. So I muted his audio from his phone so that when his computer starts picking up video, we won't have feedback. Thank you, Mr.
Okay, let's try that. So that's the audio now from his webcam. In the thumbnail images at the top, you can see the microphone is muted for his cell phone. Yes. There I turned off the video on his cell phone. Okay. In the center. In the center. In the center of the screen, you're seeing the and video leave. of the Zoom session yeah. over my remote connection. So it's not very yeah, clear. It says, it says I'm leaving. Oh, wait a minute. It worked if I put, put punch the button, it says leave the session. I didn't do that. Okay, I look like my phone is com completely shut down. I see you in a corner. It sounds like you're in a hollow. So maybe. I think the sound problem for him now yeah, you, is because he sounds like you're through, in an empty room. He's hearing me through his computer speakers instead of his cell phone. Oh, I can. Yeah. Uh, say something again. Okay, uh, in my in my um, my speaker phones are turned on. Now that's better, but I also I also have hearing aids, but the uh, my hearing aids are not hooked up to my computer. Now that's much that's much better, Doug. I I think so. Now that we've copied the files from, hope, from the old computer to the new computer, much faster hard drive. It, one of the reasons use, that I got the new one. I'm going to use Fab's Auto Backup to restore the files to the new computer. They're copied to his new computer, but they're not in the right location okay. until I use Fab's Auto Backup to actually restore them to the correct locations on his new computer. I'm looking through the selections here in Fab's Auto Backup to determine if I yeah, want to I guess so. unselect I'm, anything. I really don't know what all those are, but that's... Uh, 
Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. You know, uh, Chrome, uh, that, that's Google Chrome. Um, that, that's sometimes Google Chrome, they, they want you to do all kinds of things. And, and uh, that's something that I like to find out more about because it, 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 they seem like they want to take over your computer. Okay. You know how cats like to be stroked underneath their chin? I think I must be part cat. I can imagine. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, I, well, Doug, I realized that nothing ever happens until something's been sold, and and that means being sold means whether it's a idea, a philosophy, uh, whatever. Nothing happens in this world until something has been sold. And it does, when you make a sale, the word sale covers a broad spectrum of ideas and commodities. So I, I believe in, 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 in selling something. So, you know, Chrome is selling access to me and they're selling access to you, et cetera. And if, uh, probably a if you didn't subscribe to Chrome, you probably wouldn't be able to put this program on. So, I, you got it. This is starting the restore operation now with Fab's auto backup. Puts all of his files into the locations where they belong on the new computer. How did that end up being that? Is that from the... Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Do do I need to remember that? Yes. And, 
Right. I do have that. I have that here. Okay. Well, yeah, if you remember back in the days when we were in the ultralights, we had nicknames. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. Reach out and touch someone is what that's good for. Chuck is telling us about the ROTS abbreviation we see everyone. Reach out and touch someone. It was his nickname as a pilot when we were in the ultralight club together. I-L-E-Y at Outlook.com. So that's, that's how uh, R-O-T-S-R is a shortening of Rots Riley. That's my old uh, Valley Ultralights nickname. So I will, I will treasure that. I'll keep that in my files. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, some from my old camera and some from my phone and probably some from my brother that sends me some through email and uh, my daughter, various people that send me photographs. Over the last couple of minutes, you've noticed the uh, icons showing up on his screen. It's uh, 11 out of, out of 33. So 29 gigabytes left. It's appears to be working faster than it did on the old computer if i'm interpreting that correctly sure we're going to take a look here on the old computer in regards to his hard drive and test the speed of the old hard drive Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm giving them a little bit of information about a zip file here and how they operate. We'll be going into that more in the future. Uh, that may have been installed in, by accident. Yeah. I think I think somebody advised me to open uh, learn how to do zips, and um, that might have been what I found. Somewhere along the line, Chuck got WinZip installed on his computer. So when I try to open a zip file, it's automatically going into WinZip. And I'm telling it here to go into Windows Explorer instead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here I'm selectively unzipping or pulling out the um, crystal disk mark folder from that zip file without having extracted the entire zip file. Right.
in other words, is, is um, in other words, there is a file and you reached in and got a portion of it, and and you wanted to look at a particular portion of that particular zip file. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that particular zip file important to me? Oh. Okay. Oh, you would. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. There, yeah, I understand. I'll take the envelope. Okay. Around this time, I'm explaining the concept of files and folders using an analogy of sheets of paper and an envelope of how you can store files inside a envelope on the computers. We call them folders. Now we're about to start a speed test for his old hard drive. I'm explaining here that technicians might recognize that the default settings for Crystal Disk Mark, I have them set to smaller numbers than the normal default for Crystal Disk Mark, just so it doesn't take so long to do the benchmarking test. It's first going to show us the read numbers down through all four rows. These different rows are a different type of test. In the first row, that 91.18 is always going to be the fastest. 
for both the read number and the write number. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Here we're getting some messages about the file already exists. And this has to do with, he's already done some downloads on the new computer. And so there's file name conflicts. Since it's in the downloads folder, we really don't care about it. So I think I wind up clicking on um, skip or keep newest. I don't remember which I do. Uh -huh. This one right here that we're working on today is uh, about five days old. Well, I actually, I think I got it. Uh, I got it last Friday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So I was asking him there how long he's had this new computer because he's done apparently some downloads from the internet. Unless those are downloads I did, I'm not sure, but that's why we're getting some conflicting file names. Yeah. Wow. I think that number just said there's 734 conflicting names. And there the restore job is finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, that's almost a mirror image of the old computer. Yeah, a lot of those don't need to be on that desktop, but oftentimes I was scared to, to eliminate them. So I just ignored them. Here I'm creating a new folder on the desktop just to stuff a lot of those icons away so they're out of sight as he starts getting his computer, um, new computer set up the way he likes it. Okay. I was wondering uh, earlier today, before you and I got together, I was. Uh, doing and looking for emails or something and it would the, my new computer was as slow as it could be here i'm noticing that his one drive is uploading a bunch of files since we just restored a bunch of files to his computer his computer's running really sluggish now because it's uploading all these files I don't think that's probably what he was, the trouble he was having earlier in the day, perhaps earlier in the day, it had to do with uh, Windows updates. Because he said that was earlier that day, which was uh, February 10th 
and that would have been Wednesday, which is the day after uh, Windows updates occur. Okay. Yeah. Well, once that is synced, then uh, then that slowness will be gone away. That, will it automatically sync while I'm not on the computer? Another thing I did with the OneDrive, I think I've already done it here, is I paused the synchronization so that we wouldn't have to deal with the sluggishness. While, it's, while those files are synchronizing. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. This folder that's open on his desktop is that folder I created called Unneeded Icons. So we're going to use a variety of techniques to move the icons from his desktop into that folder until he selects which ones he actually wants to have remain on the desktop. He can drag them back after the fact. Here I'm dragging a selection box over a bunch of icons so I can drag them all together as a group into the folder. Okay. Yeah. I was explaining here the Mozilla Thunderbird has a generic icon because that program's not actually installed on the new computer yet. And here I'm showing the Mozilla Thunderbird icon the way it's supposed to look and the way it is on his old computer. Once we install it on the new computer, then the icon will look like that. I, I, I would like to learn more about that program down the road. And, and right above, uh, the Firefox and Mozilla are, are together. Now that malware bytes is, I bought that uh, program to eliminate malware and that's something that i may not renew based on conversations that i may have with you and someone else as to which is the best security uh, virus who to subscribe to since we're not going to be dealing with the subject of virus in this um, session i just gave him a confirmation that yeah i'd I'll be recommending he does not renew that, so he should not renew it before we actually do discuss that subject in another video. Here I'm demonstrating in multiple different sequences just the idea of dragging a rectangle box over a bunch of icons so you can drag them into a different folder all in one motion. That printer's list icon and a couple of the other icons are created by Fab's auto backup 
it shows a list of printers that were on the old computer and another one that showed a shows a list of applications on the old computer and another one that shows all the files so it looks like uh, one or two of those I'm just deleting this is a list of all the files that were wow. restored And I drag that into the unneeded icons folder because maybe we'll have a desire to look at that list later if we're missing some kind of functionality on his new computer. You're copying those in and, and just and dragging over to this other. And, and OK. 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 Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. So if I accidentally was uh, put it on top of HP scan, it would go into that folder as opposed to going into its own uh, dedicated folder. I got you. Okay. beginning to see some of the titles of some of it and it's uh, jpeg files i don't know why they they should be on the desktop they this is the installed software list that fabs auto backup gave us uh, for to show software that was installed on the old computer. I just spotted another thing to ask the question about down the road. Yeah, I sure did. In other words, Picasa. That's uh, uh, and where to where? That's where most of my pictures are. Um, so I was wondering if that's the best place for them. Or I, so I wrote down picture storage. So. Okay. <laughs> Let's hope it's better. Yeah, we're doing the speed test of the hard drive on the new computer. It's actually a uh, NVMe M.2 drive rather than a spinning hard disk like the old computer. You can see the difference between those numbers, 91.18. Megabytes per second compared to the new computer, which is 512 megabytes per second. Right. Mm -hmm. An effective way to speed up an older computer is to actually put in a newer hard drive, but they typically aren't, don't have the slot for an M.2, but you could put in an SSD drive and that 91 megabytes per second might go up to about 200 megabytes per second. 
maybe somewhat more, but not. it won't get the 500 megabytes per second that the M.2 NVMe drive gets. Here I'm actually changing the default program for zip files on the old computer because I keep getting stuck into that WinZip program. Okay. Now we're going to do a comparison of the CPU speed on the two computers using this program called CPU-Z. And I'll be running that on both computers to show the difference between the uh, processor, processing capability of each of the computers. Okay. Okay. There's 107 for this processor, and I think that's 215 for the multi thread. Single thread, multi thread. 107, 215. And the new computer, who, what is that? 384 and 1430, so much faster on the newer computer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. It's amazing. That's like getting from a Model T to a Ferrari. Now, yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of one of the things that uh, uh, RV RV guys, uh, you see RV, uh, yeah, that's is that uh, what's his name in Oregon? Vans aircraft, okay. Van and Vans uh, pilots stay away from the Whitman tailwinds because the Whitman tailwinds run circles around an RV. <laughs> you know, you take a, a um, 150 horsepower W8, and it'll it'll cruise at uh, over 220. We got on this conversation about airplanes because we I, I compared. The speed difference between those computers comparing my Cessna to an RV-8, those are two models of aircraft. RV? 
Big, big difference. I'm still active on the tailwind group. Uh, you know, I, I put on fly-ins for the tailwinds here at Chandler for over 10 years. And uh, I retired uh, back 10 years ago, 10 years, 20, 2011, they presented Nancy and I a, an award in appreciation for your many years of dedication to the West Coast Tailwind Fly-In 10 years ago. I miss all those guys. Yes, close that out. It, it, it certainly a, was a, a much better built computer. I can see that right now. Okay, when, all right, when I, for example, when I, when I log on, I would like to um, go to a, a home page, if you will, for the lack of a better term. For example, over, uh, can I work something on my old computer? Okay, if you click on that round dot down on the lower left, on the, no, the next one right there. Click on that. I think that, I think that's what I do. Wow, that seems no that okay. Now see right up at the top right there where it says apps, click on that little blue icon that's right there. Yes. Okay, that's my home page. That's what I'm. That's what I'm used to finding. And so you see all uh, across the top, where it has uh, Amazon and bookmarks, and uh, there's some of those that are missing now. Uh, that's where I, and I'm not sure that that's the best place to start from, but that's a place where I'm familiar with going to other places from that. In other words, um, I get my Gmail and my uh, Yahoo Mail music. I don't know why that's there. Amazon, when I go bookmarks, uh, beautiful song is actually Facebook, eBay. Uh, normally my, my B of A icon is up there where I log on to my banking. And so that's, I'm not sure that I, Yahoo is the best one to use. I'm open for discussion on that, but that's kind of the format I like. And if you scroll up, you'll see down here in my portfolio. I, I, I like to watch all of that every day. Okay. So all I'm going to have to do here is uh, bring in his bookmarks from his Google Chrome in order to get the uh, bookmarks that he wants. However, you, 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 in the apps up there, you see uh, inbox, that's that uh, Inbox Riley 35, that, that's Google, I mean Gmail, and Yahoo is not there. Somewhere in here, you're going to see me give a command to synchronize his Google Chrome. Able to put it up there, that's the, most likely the reason it's not there.
And here this one shows sync is off, although you can't see it because of my video thing sitting over that part of the screen. Oh, right below the big, below the big word Google, I see my B of A icon, it's laying right there. Right underneath the, the E and the word Google, right straight down, online ID. And, and then I see uh, Big M is uh, Google, Gmail. Their sync is on for the old computer. Oh, well, now you, you see all of the icons on the old computer? Yahoo, Yahoo Mail, uh, uh, Gmail, Facebook, Bank of America, Craigslist, Amazon, eBay Motors. Those those used to be up at, up there in the top. We're right up that in that line up there. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And there you can see sync is off, so I'm clicking turn on sync, and that will bring his bookmarks in. Okay. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah, I don't want Google looking into my <laughs> into my affairs too much. <laughs> in fact, I I seldom use uh, where you see the great big word Google on the in the middle of the page. Uh, I I seldom ever use that. I go directly up to. Um, Yahoo and and work at that from there. And I when I click on that, then it opens up that line right there by Yahoo, and that's where I I I look for things. Yeah.
Okay, that'd be fine. Yeah, uh, that way I don't have to. Yeah, that that'd be good, because the portfolio I look at daily, and uh, yeah. So I just offered and suggested that we make the Yahoo page his default landing page for Google Chrome, since that's what he always goes to. I'm going to choose open a specific set of pages, uh, selecting the page that we are currently on. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, that that right at this stage of the game, it'd be good. Uh, one other thing that I would like. Uh, where uh, where can I find my e drawings? Yeah, on the old on the old. So here we're going to go install the e drawings program on the new computer and test the functionality. Yeah, right. Not normally. Uh, it, yeah, now it's open, and it, I I go up to file and and open them. That that opens up. Uh, now you open and that now I can look at all of those things. Right. That's a that's a three wheel vehicle. Right. E drawing. Yeah. There it is. Right. Okay. Yes, I did. It's, um, I, I bought now that that um, to access that file. It's it's uh, it's a lifetime uh, purchase. But when I installed it on the computer, I was didn't really know what I was doing, so it may not have been installed correctly. But anyway, uh, and I generally down where you put the Google Chrome icon in the in the taskbar down below. I used to, I have that e-drawings down there 
so I don't have to look elsewhere for it when I'm. Those are the only things that I've been active, actively uh, working on lately. It, it, it said that it didn't need um, um, one of those big long numbers when I originally uh, downloaded it. That, that I would be permanently registered. Um, yeah, that's what I don't, don't understand, Doug. He drawings chat box, chat now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There it is, there it is. Uh, I purchased it uh, the first part of uh, 2020, like in April or something, or, or February. I forgot exactly when it was. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh, that I don't know. I, I, I'm a consumer of the, the CAD data. I know that. And when I when I previously installed it, uh, I kept getting uh, emails from SolidWorks. And I, I constantly get emails from SolidWorks because that's who designed e-drawings, I guess. I get, um, almost every day I get an email from Solid or SolidWorks. But if, I'm trying to figure out here what to download for e-drawings and I 
kicking myself now because the installation file is already on his computer and I will discover that in a little bit coming up here. However, uh, when I bought the plans for this particular vehicle, uh, he sent me the plans, not in hard copy, but, but, a, and, but a, a, a folder. In other words, you click on it and it opens and, and that puts it into your computer. So. Yeah, it was $125. A set of plans. Yeah, and and to build it from those, and supposedly you're supposed to be able to download and and see all the dimensions and stuff. But I found I've, I've been trying to navigate that and learn about it. So that's why I had the icon down that, well, when I installed it, it put the icon down there for some reason. It's been a long time ago. It's been over two, uh, it's been a year, I guess. But if I know where to find it, that's okay, Doug. It doesn't necessarily have to be down there on the bottom. So here's the installation, uh, the folder that contains the installation file, that e drawings folder. New HP computer computer that went south. Yeah, April of twenty. Boy, I might get some updates. Well, now they told me they said I didn't have to have a, I didn't never have to put in a license key. I speculated in here that perhaps a license key would unlock additional features because we're actually installing it without a license key and it uh, functions perfectly fine. Yes, yes. I, I do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. Try, try Chuck. It might have been Rudolph, but that's okay. R I L E Y. R I L E Y. 
it's all yeah it's, yeah it is it's tiny for me too uh, uh R rudolph riley one two three four at yahoo.com and it would have been phone number is five five nine four nine three zero three three eight I took Chuck's computer off screen so that he could enter his information on this registration screen without displaying to the internet. So this sent a verification code to his email, so that's how they handle the Res registration or activation to make sure that uh, it's not being installed on a computer that it's not been purchased for. Um, yeah, I can, I can put it in there. So the eDrawings program is now successfully installed on his new computer and we're going to test it by going to the folder that has the drawing files and make sure that it works. Down to cabin, the next line down right there, try that. That's it. Okay. Oh, and now the icon is down on the lower uh, thing. Then I right click on the icon and choose pin to taskbar to keep it there since he indicated that's what he's accustomed to. Yep, they did. Oh, okay.
Right. Here I'm configuring so that his icons, all of his icons show up in the system tray in the bottom right corner of the screen. Oh, okay. That's good. If I remember right, I'm coming in here to configure his OneDrive so that all of his files are full-time on his computer so that uh, even if he loses his connection to the internet, he'll still be able to access his files because the default configuration, I think, is to save space on the local hard drive by only downloading files when you try to use them. And this is the check mark to do that. Save space and download files as you use them. Remove that check mark to be sure the files are always on your computer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah, I, I would think so. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. It's a scam call. <laughs> okay. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. I was trying to point out here the way these icons would look when you have the save space selected, but the icons aren't really shown the way that they that they will eventually. I, I'm supposing it's because it's not fully synchronized yet. These green check marks are indicating these files are actually stored on this computer, even though we still have the save space active. Well, it's probably because these files were on this computer before OneDrive started synchronizing, and eventually those will those icons will change. The icons I'm referring to is those round green circles with a green check mark inside of them. Okay, in other words, what what instead of those being stored in the cloud, we're putting we're dedicating some space on my hard drive to let them live there as opposed as opposed to the cloud. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, I understand. Yeah. If you've got sufficient space on a hard drive, why leave it in the cloud? Uh, okay. I'm. I'm 
full agreement on that. That little blue slice on that round circle is the amount of his hard drive that he's, that he's using. The gray part of the circle is the part that's unused. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Uh, I'm not too sure what what you when you refer to OneDrive is that the 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 cloud, or but not the physical hard drive inside my computer. Okay, so OneDrive uh, designates things that I that are out in the Ethernet. And I explained there it's not the Ethernet, but it's the internet. And a OneDrive is a service provided by Microsoft where files are stored on the internet or what we call in the cloud. So OneDrive is just the name of that service. Now, if I, it, it, it wouldn't be necessary for me to put store things in the cloud if I, unless I start running out of uh, space on my hard drive, right? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 All right. I'm pretty sure we'll probably do as one of our videos in the future on the subject of OneDrive and cloud storage because there's a lot more that's worth learning on that subject. I can drop turn it on the following day, I'll be able to uh, navigate a little bit better, Doug. Okay. So I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't be concerned with that right now, not at all. Hello. Uh -oh. Who's calling, please? We've almost reached the end of this here. Uh, Chuck's just gone away to pass off a phone call, I think, to Nancy. I'm not quite sure if there's anything worth waiting for him to come back for at the end here. I'm showing just three and a half minutes left on this video. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end, end that and come in and actually give my uh, sign off here. So, 
so do I have this all set right yeah I think so if you would like to request a session with me uh, all you have to do is participate with me on video and let me record it so I can put it on YouTube and my services are free in exchange for that uh, let's see I got to switch over to this email address here send an email to me Doug Betts at livewindowstraining.com give me an idea in the body of the email what you'd like to have help with and you've well, you've probably heard enough here to have an idea of just, just about anything that you have need of with your Windows based computer whether it's fixing a problem on the computer or teaching you some concept or whatever you might need help with so let's see I think that's it for this video uh, sorry about the audio <laughs> troubles that was kind of a train wreck uh, but maybe it was still useful. Have a great day. See you later. Goodbye.